Good morning and welcome to Bank Chat. I'm Hugh Chewett and your co-host today, Zoha Abdul Karim of Time Magazine. So have put down that coffee and say good morning. <laughs> good morning. Right. Good our morning, main, everyone. Our main topic today <laughs> is childhood obesity. As the Department of Health releases figures showing one in five of our primary students are obese. That figure is down slightly from last year, but still worrying. In 2006, the department launched an Eat Smart campaign. What sort of effect is that having? What more should we be doing? How do we encourage children to exercise and discourage them to from eating fatty and sugary food? Give us a call with your comments. Our number is 233-88266. You can email backchat at rthk.hk or you can go to our Facebook page, Backchat on RTHK Radio 3 and comment there. After 9.15, the government asks the Court of Final Appeal to consult Beijing. Is that a threat to our judicial independence? Joining us for the first discussion, we have Dr. Regina Ching, Assistant Director of Health Promotion uh, with the administration. Dr. Alvin Chan, who's a pediatrician, Vice President and Central Coordinator of the uh, Hong Kong Medical Association. And Dr. Patrick Lau, who's a professor in the Department of Physical Education at the Baptist University. Uh, Dr. Ching, we'll start with you. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. Indeed for, for, for joining us. So figures down very slightly, uh, but still one in five. That's a lot, isn't it? Of yes, yes. Primary school children. You're uh, true. Yeah. Uh, looking around, I don't see that many overweight. <laughs> it's not my impression generally. For a start, when you say obese, you mean, is it like with adults that you can be overweight and then if you're very overweight you become obese? So you're talking about seriously, children who are seriously overweight? Well, we have a, a, a way of measuring um, childhood obesity. And the figure I'm um, quoting, uh, we measure childhood obesity by measuring the height against the weight. So if the uh, median weight for height exceeds 20% uh, of the median, then we call that overweight. Well, many a times parents are not aware of this definition, so they may consider their child as sort of normal, but in fact the weight is a bit over. So um, we need an objective measurement and we're doing it every year for children, and they have a free assessment to come to our student health centers for that assessment. Sorry, you're relating them to the median weight? Weight for height. For height? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't just mean that children are getting bigger. Well, of course they are, they're growing. Yeah. So it's important no, 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 no. to. I mean, I mean it doesn't just, <laughs> just mean that, that children are generally getting bigger. They're actually getting fatter. They're getting fatter. They are getting fatter. Yeah, for the same height, yeah. they're well weighing heavier. Yeah. So disproportionately, yeah. disproportionately heavier. heavier. Yes. Yeah. Right. And and uh, when did you first start detecting? I mean, was there a time maybe five years ago or ten years ago that you started to detect this change, this shift of children getting heavier uh, compared to previous documentation that your department might have done? Well, um, because we have um, the Student Health Service started in 1995, mm. and that was a very good time when we started to collect uh, very comprehensive data of how our children are, are weighing. Um, because every child has an opportunity every year to come to our center for that measurement. So from that year onwards, we found the, uh, child, the obesity or the, the uh, weight, their weight increasing year after year. And uh, we started to, you know, um, be very concerned. And at the same time, we noticed all around us, it, in fact, it's a global problem yes. that children are getting heavier and heavier, and there is no difference in the trend um, uh, among our children. So we think it's time we have to be really serious and look at how we should address this issue. And one more question. Do you see this pattern also in older children, in secondary school children as well? Yes. It's the same situation. Same thing? Is it the same kind of rate as well? Same, same? Uh, it's not as heavy uh, as uh, primary school children, uh, but the trend is also going up. Is that because you think there's like a wave of fatness coming up? <laughs> that the, it's starting with the younger children and it will move up sort of the generation? And the well, in fact, the, the problem is there among adults as well. Mm. Right. So it's, it's sort of a whole population issue. And the uh, root cause of the problem is in society. Because I'm just it's wondering, the way I'm just live, wondering why, the, why the secondary school students wouldn't be, as, uh, wouldn't be so bad as the primary students. Why would the child? Uh, overall, the rate is not as high, but the trend is also going up. Mm. Why is it not, not as high with the secondary school? Patrick Lang, do you, um, do you know? One of the research evidence demonstrate in the uh, difference between primary and secondary is, uh, especially in the girls, during their puberty, they were more recognized uh, weight issue. So um, actually, we uh, not only have the overweight, obese 
、uh, school children in primary,、uh, secondary, but also some underweight. There's two extremes. But actually, if I want to,、uh, if I can answer answer your question, is the sensitivity of the body size is getting more serious and sensitive to the peers when they get into the puberty or uh, uh, senior high school. Mm, yeah. mm. Uh, uh, Dr. Lau, I was taken by what you just said.、Uh, That the problem is not just、uh, overweight, but underweight as well, because we have an issue, you know, that even thin, thin individuals、uh, who don't have a weight problem <laughs> may not necessarily be fit or healthy. Oh,、well, actually, if you, you know, right now we have an iPad on our hand, you can just click in the internet and type "thin club," thin, very thin, the club. There's a big club of people. They share their <laughs>、um, a very extreme dieting practice. Among the youngsters,、um, age young as young as six years old. So、um, thin is beautiful, slim is the best、uh, shape, body shape, the supermodel ideal. This is very popular a lot around the world, including the、um, Hong Kong Japanese. So as、uh, Dr. Cheng just mentioned, this is a global trend, and、uh, yeah, we have to look to into the two extremes.、Um, actually, the figures demonstrate since 1995. And when we discuss the topic today, this is not new. Actually, since 2006, according to my data from SHS Department of Health, every year we have very good communication. Six years old, the primary already go over 20 percent, but we don't recognize. I mean, I recognize, but the government still、um, need to take a kind of action and a lot of resources to put on that. And for the secondary. Uh, since 2009, it's already go over 20 percent. So it's not new issue.、Right. Yeah,、um, I I I I conduct a study intervention in 1999 with the pediatric department from、uh, Prince of Wales Hospital, called Fun and Fit Program. The research funding is from、uh, government health research fund. So this is pretty good result. But another thing is, okay, during the six months, we get extremely good. Results in the physiological measures, the body size, BMI, whatever. But the sustainability of the schools is <laughs> difficult. So we are not talking about only the interventions. We are talking about lifestyles、hmm. and how we can sustain the effect in the long term.、Hmm. In, in fact,、uh, Hong Kong Medical Association has been advocating、um, exercise for health for a long time because I think、uh, other than the diet. The lifestyle, just like、uh, Patrick had just mentioned,、uh, is that、uh, in Hong Kong, even the children from the kindergarten age will begin a sedentary lifestyle. They would like to sit and watch the iPad, and the parents <laughs> would like to train them for various sorts of uh, uh, skills that just use their hands and the mind, and not the body. So、uh, just also a few days ago, the Hong Kong University, the Education Department, also released a study that、uh, in Hong Kong, the re- Reading capability of Hong Kong children was superb, but then the thinking, the motivation, and the uh, uh, solving problems uh, uh, aspects were very uh, below uh, the international peers. We, same we are training. I mean, we train. We are training our children being examination machine.、Mm-hmm. They're good in the scores, but they're not good in thinking. Especially this year, I am、uh, lecturing in the new system from DSE. The three three four system, and and actually I'm we are I'm lecturing both groups from the old system and the new system. Big difference in the in the independent thinking and critical thinking. So、um, I'm actually quite worried about that. Even anyway, over a year, <laughs> you're saying even over a year, there's a noticeable difference. Not the year, but the challenges.、Hmm. Those old system that they took the、um, Hong Kong CE and they took the A level, they have. They have overcome a lot of barriers and train up their strength and the competence in in critical thinking. But for those DSC, as Dr. Chen just mentioned, need more than that. We need more than they just get a good score. But <laughs> you know, in, in fact, I think、uh, rather than just、uh, concentrating on the diet problem, which we should. Pay more attention to the lifestyle problem. Also,、uh, involve our、uh, perspectives of life. In Hong Kong, I guess the parents and the teachers are not really into teaching the children or uh, uh, nurturing them into a do-it-yourself、uh, style of、uh, living. Uh, in Hong Kong, our children have always been、um, labelled as being、uh, princes and princesses <laughs> to be served by others. 
And uh, so even up to primary school age, they still don't know how to tie school lace, uh, shoelace or other uh, manual things. So I guess perhaps the education department and I, I think uh, social work department and uh, uh, health, department of health, should have interdepartmental inter efforts to gear up our children's uh, do-it-yourself uh, way of living. Well, Dr. Chen, I think you are, you are correct. Um, that's why we are not... Um, waiting until primary schools to uh, help children um, do better for themselves. Uh, we are starting the uh, anti-obesity campaign um, as early as age two to three. Yeah. That is at the time when children are being sent to um, kindergartens and childcare yeah. centers. Yeah. We sort of um, help the uh, uh, child minders and the teachers to change their mindset that um, helping themselves with um, healthy eating, physical activity is part of their life. Yes. So it becomes something so, so um, into their daily activities yeah. and routine that they don't need to pay special attention yeah. and make yeah. an effort to do as they, as they grow older. I think Dr. Ching um, demonstrated very comprehensive saying. But this time, when I read the, um, the results from the news release, it purely focused on the diet campaign. So I think this is much easier being an exercise professional in university. We see uh, when we try to adopt the comprehensive lifestyle changes, it's much easier, relatively easier in the diet changes instead of uh, the exercise um, well, don't behavior. Well, about changing the whole of Hong Kong and the whole attitude of Hong Kong and the whole way that Hong Kong <laughs> operates. I mean, that's a bit of a tall order, isn't it? It's easier just to eat more vegetables. Yeah. This is good. But on the other hand, when we look in the research literature about exercise behavior adoption, it seems uh, dietary is you are encourage people to do something less mm. or smart. But to increase those exercise consumption in energy, you need people to activate to do something instead of avoid to eat something. So you're talking about some kind of uh, initiative or the initiate in physics. You have to do something. You start to do something. Sweating, mm. uh, muscle pain, uh, delay onset of muscle soreness. You don't feel very comfortable at the beginning. But if you stop eating chocolate or McDonald's, still all right. Mm. Because you're not paying extra effort. You just stop doing something. So uh, from the perspective of exercise research, we are actually um, confront more barriers than diet um, to a certain extent. In, in fact, both are important, and in fact, Dr. Ching is uh, responsible for both aspects. Yeah, he is yeah, also yeah. engineering the yeah. exercise for health yeah. projects with the Hong Kong Medical so Association. So I'm not saying well. um, which one is more important. What I'm saying, the message is, this is not talking about only dieting or the exercise. We are talking about the 24 <coughs> hours lifestyle every day, every week the whole year. And this is exactly the core issue of how difficult to combat childhood obesity. Mm. All, all three of you seem to be implying, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the, the starting point is the family home. Yes. Uh, you know, parents, <laughs> uh, grandparents, grandparents yes. often in Hong yeah. Kong, uh, and domestic helpers, obviously high <laughs> incidence of that in, uh, in Hong Kong. Certainly in my own household, I have one son who's now 18. I don't necessarily practice what I preach myself, but my wife and I were quite strict on, on educating him and the household about what he ate. Like my, grand, my mother, his grandmother would want to give him chocolates. We said no. <laughs> now he is a cope, I mean, he consumes copious amounts of fruits and vegetables every day. Mm. You know, he doesn't have a sweet tooth and he's quite fit. This is what we call 421 syndrome in China. Four grandparents because two family and the father and the mother and two is the parents because it was one child policy. So uh, very few uh, kids but many, many seniors. In Hong Kong, we have to add two domestic helpers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you're right. laughs> I guess uh, it's very good in your family, but in general in Hong Kong, because junk foods are just all around us, mm. and it's very difficult to resist temptations. And then also the ad advertisement in the television and the media about the... Uh, 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 about the... Um, the uh, <laughs> Uh, omnipotence of the pow milk powder, you see. The oh, milk right. powder company, uh, right. they are also playing a role to uh, suggesting that they are giving a superb nutritional aspect to the parents, which yes. the parents believe. Mm. But in fact, that is a source of making children overweight.
in yes. Hong Kong and in other developed countries. So, do a lot of these milk powders have a lot of sugar or something like that? Or? Definitely. Yes, oh. a lot. Mm. So, how you've got to tell me your secret because I've got two children and um, they're. But it's, very, it's just a battle to get them to eat anything, to be quite honest. Uh, especially the, the one who's just turned three, and he just wants chocolate. And he will go for a day without eating. Uh, tough love. Tough love <laughs> is, the, is the answer. Okay, with, you with, do it for a day, but the second day, <laughs> you've got to give him something. And if it's only sweet things, that's, that's the... Uh, that's why you have well, to start very early. Yes, I think actually. there is, there is one too? very mm. important piece of advice, mm. and it's that parents are the best models for children. If a parent eats well, junk food, and serves sort of healthy food for children. Why should a child follow suit? Mm, yeah, yeah. So role modeling, in fact, is one of the major influences. Say, if you want your kid to do something, but you are going to the other direction, you, you eat the, the fatty food, and then you ask them not to do, you watch television with beer on your hand, and then you ask them to, do, to drink the soft drink or whatever. It doesn't work. So this is a role model, the sports family, you have to demonstrate sporty um, habit right. and uh, healthy eating. Or uh, we are not saying that don't eat that, don't eat others, but we eat smartly, right? right? Still, you know that sweet foods and fatty foods are more attractive and they're more yes. attractive. No, not exactly. I have a very young um, daughter, mm -hmm. she is five right now, she didn't eat candy, no mm -hmm. chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, as Dr. Cheng had the conversation before we get in the studio, we say three um, in Chinese some three things pass up, mm. right? So what what we are saying is that in the younger age, like three years old, it actually determines the future, like eighty years old uh, uh, adult. So when we um, present them correct messages about the correct body size, the correct eating habit, and how the discipline organize their daily, you know, exercise or behavior pattern, of course, it's difficult. But since I, I am a very disciplined guy, and I, I start to uh, discipline her when she was two or three years old. So I think it's possible, but it, it takes a lot of energy to stop or, or, or explain the reasons behind. So I don't have any difficulty to, um, to, to forbid her to go into McDonald's. We don't get into McDonald's, there's no problem at all. So I think it's not just disciplinary, it's the, the way you educate children is to let them understand, yeah, really yeah. understand, and then because that's their right of knowing and their, their right of choice of the foods. But many a time, parents didn't really explain to them uh, in their language that they could understand and didn't give them the right to choose because they just give them anyway. And yeah. then, uh, supposing the children could not resist the temptation, yeah. but if, if they really understand, I think. Uh, it's possible that the children would choose not to eat the junk food. Yeah, Dr. Chen just mentioned one thing. They w we I, I don't know what experience. planet you're living on. No, I, I, I really <laughs> don't think that's true. I really don't think that's true. Um, uh, 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 what do you do with a child that just won't eat? That when you, when you, you do home-cooked food with lots of vegetables, and you eat it, and you, you praise the vegetables and everything, and you try and make it sort of pr attractive portions, and you give a choice, and you don't force them to eat one particular vegetable or anything else, and you do all these positive kind of things, and they still will not eat. They, they did. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> well, imagine it's difficult. It's not an easy job. Well, you know? <laughs> your is, if your child is normal, assuming, <laughs> and he or she doesn't have any medical problem, then why, why shouldn't he or she eat when, when, when they get hungry? If you if you the doctors, understand that, you tell me. I don't well, <laughs> maybe they are taking so many junk food. The challenge is uh, the challenge <laughs> is there are so many um, accessible varieties before you present them the correct choice. So my my tactic is don't present them too many attractive junk food beforehand mm. until yeah. until they have the ability to differentiate the good food mm. and the bad food. Yeah. So I'm not saying that they're not eating ice cream or chocolate or yeah. pizza. We, we go to pizza, but we know how many pizzas. Oh, this is enough because she knows fat is not good in the long term for her health. You know, you cannot underestimate how smart of our kids right now <laughs> from three years old to five years. They're so smart to understand so many things. One of the major problems, as Dr. Ching said, is parents. Yeah, and, and another <laughs> issue is that um, I think children from an early age onward, they are so brainwashed by TV advertisements. Mm, yeah. They can recognize the brands, um, the logos, and they and that sort of recognition helps them to choose food. Whenever they go out, they ask for the same brand yeah. without realizing the content, whether it's good for health or not. And if parents are not aware of that, 
they keep sending children to these sort of brands yes. and collect the toys. Yes. These yes. are all sorts of advertisements that keep brainwashing children and parents, so, and that is doing very yeah. bad. Don't fall in the typical trap of the toys. You know, yep. induce that bad choice of eating, right? Mm. right. Reinforce a, a very unhealthy uh, way <laughs> of. The, 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 but yeah. I mean, the, what I'm also saying is that when a child won't eat or something, when a child has these problems eating, um, um, it's, it's difficult for the parent because you want your child mm. to eat, okay? Yes. And that's a primary thing is for the parents to get the child to eat. Don't let her to Third be your boss. <laughs> this is the, this yeah. is the decision. I mean, as as we as parents, we all know when you're starving, you eat. So suddenly, some day you find your kid, you don't need to encourage her to eat because after the whole day rugby game, he eat anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. So you have to, you know, persistent. It's a battle. <laughs> it's a battle. <laughs> In an affluent society, it's difficult to let your child be hungry. That's true. But on the other hand, the parents can make the environments that is more uh, educated. See, I don't to want a battle. Children. I don't want it to be a battle. I, don't, I think. There's also, isn't there a danger of this turning into a, 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 a battle? You don't want food to be such an issue that it's a fight every day <laughs> to eat or not to eat. Yeah, I think because you have already lost the battle <laughs> from, yeah, yeah, from the beginning. <laughs> it, well, just ask yourself one question. Uh, when a child is born, since when has he or she asked for Coke, soft drinks, um, French fries? Never. He, he's so adults, happy yeah. with breast, uh, breast milk. Yeah. Breast milk is very um, sort of, it's not sugary, it's very good, it's simple food, mm. and they're ve very happy. Yeah, they're happy, yeah, they're hungry, yeah. they get the food, and they, they are satisfied. <laughs> but somehow something went wrong when children start on to more solid feeding, and parents start feeding them with unhealthy products. I think that the point is, it's smart not to eat um, everything. It's smart. You have yeah, the, the choice. You know, yeah, the choice. You, you let them know you, they have choice. I'm not saying that it's a, like like a very patriarchal management to the to the case, but you have to let them know. Oh, there are so many choices in the in the world. You can pick whatever you like, but concern your health development. And uh, uh, one of the ways to make children more receptive to a balanced diet is, uh, in I had uh, you know I write songs. Uh, I written songs about a balanced diet and uh, from the age of one or two the children could listen to those songs yes, yes. of balanced diet and uh, not to uh, be uh, addicted to uh, sugar sweets or ice cream so uh, in a way many children when they listen to the songs they could understand what it meant and then uh, they could adopt the thinking behind now while my child was five years old so uh, we went to a restaurant where uh, in the uh, menu there's also uh, a cup of jelly and my son asked me daddy is jelly then uh, good or not because in my song there's nothing mentioned about the jelly so uh, I told him of course you can eat jelly uh, it's also nutritious in a way there are uh, different kinds of foods in inside but uh, you can see how how it's so colorful so beautiful and so sweet because there's there might be coloring right. uh, there might be uh, some and uh, sugar and even artificial flavoring right. and these are not healthy to your body yeah. and yeah. my child that was five at that time he pushed away the uh, cup of jelly mm. and he resist, uh, he, he stopped uh, yeah. asking for it so I think if he could understand and he could make the choice I think it's possible but of course our parents in Hong Kong usually won't go to that step already they had already uh, subject the yeah, child yeah, to yeah. the... Uh, well, you're obviously all model parents, except for me, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> well, it's never too late. Yeah. Too late. But, 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 but the issue of starting early, I know, I know with, 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 with my son, we started when he was a toddler on chickpea puree and broccoli puree, you know, when he was yeah. a toddler and he didn't yeah. know better. Yeah. But I wanted to just bring up, again, uh, uh, the things that the, the, the group has hinted at. Uh, in the states, in the states we see that, we see not a, uh, we see a diet divide where poorer Americans mm -hmm. eat fast food and have all kinds of health station. problems. Okay, yeah. Yes, exactly. And you have uh, uh, richer individuals who can, who eat salads and, and, yes. and so on and so forth and, and also have more leisure time for uh, activities. Uh, activities and are better educated about it. So does it, does it, 
uh, this may not be the case in Hong Kong, but in the States, people talk about how it is more expensive to eat well. Like right. at my company, That's just true. just two days ago, right, right. the Organic uh, Farmers Association mm -hmm. came in to give a talk mm -hmm. uh, about the value of organic vegetables and fruits. And we know all that. We know all that. But the thing is that their products are more expensive. Mm. Is, is, that a, is that an issue in Hong Kong or not? I believe it is. It's, yeah. It is an issue everywhere. Um, that's why I'm, I'm um, really happy because um, our um, healthy eating program, we targeted first and foremost all schools. And we found, um, in fact, our statistics um, reflected that uh, schools which have a s sort of uh, serving parents from a sort of lower social economic um, background yes. joined our program more. And they are more sort of um, committed in our program. That reflects that um, schools are having a commitment to really serve their students well. Yeah. So they enrolled into our program and did a good job. You're, you're right, uh, uh, based on the literature, um, lower income family, they are uh, actually facing a higher risk in the obesity issue. So um, because they have no much choice to, to have a healthy eating or the organic food. It's so expensive in Hong Kong right now if you want to eat organic vegetables. It is. The, 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 it's a social issue about the, the gap between the rich and poor. It, it is related. Mm. Yeah. Perhaps okay. it's not just about the money aspect, it's the education. Yeah. That the parents don't really know that they have to give a balanced diet. Okay, we've got, yeah. we've got a break for the news at 9 o'clock. We'll be back, we're just going to hold off for uh, three minutes. We're talking about uh, childhood obesity with those uh, worrying figures suggesting that one in five uh, primary school students in, in uh, Hong Kong are overweight. Your thoughts on that? Welcome. Email us back, chapter.thk.hk. Uh, we're also going to be talking about that uh, court of final appeal issue later in the programme. The weather briefly before the news. Sunny periods, warm and humid with mist at the weekend. 20 degrees at the moment, relative humidity is at 80%.